a really, really heartbreaking story. And, you know, if, if you look across, um, you know, just a, a short Google search, um, it says about 500,000 Ethiopians have been deported in the last four or five years from Saudi Arabia. Um, and, of course, you know, one of the things that was mentioned, or I think the report was done by the United Nations, one of the things that was mentioned is how um, these migrants who are heading to Saudi Arabia or Egypt or some of those places um, have to pass through Yemen. Yemen has been in a war since uh, 2015, you know, and so it's, it's a very, very dangerous process uh, to try to get to Saudi Arabia. So you must imagine how t bad things must be for exactly. a person to stand up, leave their country, go through, through another country that zone. is in war yeah. to be able to get to their destination. It just shows really that sad. there's so much that needs to be done. And I would also mention, you know, it's, a, it's another Im important moment to remind the Ethiopian government to take a look into this, you know, because these are their citizens and they should they should actually ask questions here. I mean, initially, part of this is part of the reason why we had prayed and hoped for the end of the crisis between Ethiopia and Tigray. And beyond that, there's so much, there's a lot of uh, economic fallout that yes. these war has, or this war over the years have caused on the people, the women, and it's just really heartbreaking. And not just Ethiopia. Other African countries need to sit up. Absolutely. Now let's move away from Ethiopia and Zambia and go to Uganda and see what's going on there. The Ugandan Health Ministry has launched a new Ebola treatment and isolation center in the fight to rid the nation of Ebola. The new center, located at Mulago Hospital, was constructed by partner states and international agencies such as UNICEF and the World Health Organization, WHO. The country's health minister, Dr. Jane Ruth Haseng, said... The semi-permanent facility would help build resilience in the fight against any outbreak of the infectious disease. The new facility, which has a capacity of 56 beds and intensive care units, becomes the seventh Ebola treatment unit in the country, where three are in Mubende, one in Kassanda, one in Entebbe, and now two in Mulago, all with a capacity of 356 beds. Let's now bring in a Ugandan journalist, Leila Bali, on this. Good morning, Leila. Thank you very much for joining us. We might be having a bit of a communication issue, but we hope that that will be resolved as we continue with the conversation this morning. Uh, unfortunately, the, Uganda, of course, has battled the Ebola crisis for the past few weeks, and there have been arguments that a new tr treatment center wasn't necessary at this time. What is the general view? What is the general reaction to this new treatment facility? Thank you so much. Last week on Thursday, Uganda started counting 33 days such that if no case, new case is registered, Uganda will be declared Ebola free. But unfortunately, a day later, a new Ebola treatment unit was commissioned by the Ministry of Health in the capital Kampala at Mulago Hospital playground. Many people were also wondering here why that could be the case. But the ministry urges that this treatment unit he will be helping out in training medics as well in regard to handling emergencies and other pandemics or any epidemic, suppose it breaks out in the country. The semi-permanent structure has cost a lot of money for agencies to come in and help the government in Uganda to construct. But we all know, despite the fact that we do not have any new case, any emergency might arise up in the country, and that is why the ministry decided to set up this new Ebola treatment unit in Mulago. Currently, Uganda is counting 33 days so far. Since, since we, in case we do not record any new case, it means that we will be declared Ebola free. But again, the ministry says that the new treatment unit is going to be, it, it, is, it will help in training medics to handle emergencies from East Africa, as well as Africa as a whole. But taxpayers are continuing to complain that probably there is full play, that the ministry would be wanting to get some money out of the emergency that is happening. Because recently the president spoke to the nation, and many people were eagerly waiting for the president to lift up all the restrictions that were put up in regard to Ebola, and surprisingly, during his speech, he spoke a lot about COVID-19. So people kept wondering why would the president speak about COVID-19 and encourage people to wear face masks and all that. So some people do believe that probably 
there is a foul play that is going on in the government and some think maybe many officials in the ministry of health are look, look finding are trying to look for ways on how to secure funding from donors in regard to COVID-19 and Ebola. Well, um, as much as uh, funding from donors will always uh, be a part of the conversation, the Ugandan government still has a lot of work that it needs to do. Um, because taking a look at the facility, you can tell that there's, you know, it, it, it it's probably was rushed or just didn't, you know, come. I, I, I don't know how to criticize it. Uh, but I want us to also talk about um, the current situation with Ebola in Uganda. Uh, a few days ago, uh, the uh, virus, about 1,200 doses of the of a new virus or a new vaccine, I beg your pardon, um, arrived in Uganda. Um, and, you know, it's meant to be one out of three of the vaccines that are currently available. Um, is this also great news? And what is the current situation with the virus in Uganda? Basically, we, we received the new trial of vaccines, but surprisingly, some people are not even willing to take up the trial of vaccines for Ebola, just like for COVID-19. Many people here did not get the vaccination, and some even had to go buy the vaccination cards to show that they've been vaccinated for COVID-19, a reason as to why even President Museveni, in his recent address, asked the nation to receive the more jabs for COVID-19 as well as a booster for COVID-19. Now the case is with Ebola. We are all wondering, are people really going to be willing, especially those in the high-risk areas of Kasanda, Movende, Wakiso, Kampala, Kagadi, Shegegwa, where cases have been recorded? Are these people really going to take up the trial vaccines? Many people still have doubts in regard to these trial vaccines because They've not been really confirmed by the World Health Organization, and everyone knows these are trial vaccines. So I'm sure even the ministry is stuck on who exactly to start, who exactly will be taking up these jabs for Ebola vaccine. Many Ugandans here do fear to take up these jabs, even when it, the case would be even during the COVID-19 period. Many Ugandans did fear to take up the jabs because of several negative effects of the jabs on their health. Now here comes in the Ebola strain and the vaccine is here. Many people are not really willing to take up the jabs. We are all looking at to see exactly who will be willing to take up the jabs. But the ministry says they'll be starting from people in the high risk areas. But will these people really take up the jabs? Or will the jobs expire from the government stores? Well, wow, that's a, an interesting way to look at it. These qu questions need to be answered. But let's talk about you know, what you've just mentioned and how the people of Uganda are unwilling to take up these jobs. 1,200 vaccines, I mean, one of three that have been, of course, sent to Uganda. But like you've mentioned, there is a problem in that regard. But even when the Sudan strain broke, up, uh, broke out recently in Uganda, one of the challenges that we had or we saw was that lots of people did not believe that the Ebola virus was in town and, you know, they were even breaking the laws and flouting the regulations imposed by the government to pre prevent a movement around the country. Would you say that there is a, a, a lack of understanding or a breach of communication uh, between the people and the government in, in terms of, you know, how they react to the Ebola virus from the outbreak and even up until now, and what would you say as some of the lessons that Uganda has maybe learned from the outbreak of the Sudan strain of the Ebola virus? You see, it is really hard. Uh, only those who have suffered from Ebola could probably be witnesses to this. But still, communities, despite the fact that they've received cases of Ebola in communities, many people in the same communities do not believe that really we've had Ebola in the country. Some people were like, the number of cases have even reduced since donors refused to send money direct to the Ministry of Health accounts and wired their monies to help out in the fight against Ebola to partner organizations, non-government organizations within the country. So people were like, you see, now the government has even started declaring that we are registering very few cases and even no cases are being registered. This is the reason as to why some people have even gone ahead to give decent barriers to their close relatives who have died of Ebola and exhuming the bodies. Days after officials from the burial teams 
attached to the Uganda Red Cross Society and the Minister of Health bury these people. Then people come up and say, no, we have to offer decent barriers to our relatives. Many people still believe that Ebola does not exist, despite the fact that the country has registered 56 people succumbing to the disease and 86 have been discharged among those who contracted the disease. We are still having a challenge with that. Last week in Mochivale district, we had a scenario where traders from Mubende had to bring by force their goods and were like, we are not going to stay hungry. We need to sell the stock that we have. So lorries carrying people from Mubende district had to invade some local markets, the weekly markets in the neighboring Chivale district. And then a scaffold had to ensue. So security had to come in. But these people from Mubende were like, no, we are not allowing to go hungry anymore. We need to find something to eat and fend our families for. So you can really look at such scenarios that are happening in the country. This means that some people still do not believe that Ebola exists. And some even say want the restrictions to be really, you know, removed by the president such that business is transacted very smoothly, just like it used to be in the previous days before Ebola was reported. Last week, the Minister of Health, General Ruth Cheng, on Thursday said they still up to now do not know the origins of the new Ebola Sudan strain right, that Leila. is in the country. All right. Um, of course, it's a, a developing story. We'll continue to follow. It seems like the, the country has done its best at this point to manage it. And uh, we hope that this might or should be the end of, that, of uh, Ebola in Uganda. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Looking forward to speaking with you again. You're welcome.